Gwen Farm coming back at you um, from my chicken coop. Um, the only reason why I'm really out here is because the weather is beautiful after having our cold snap that came through last week where we were down into the mid 20s at night. Um, we did all we could to keep our birds nice and warm and comfortable when the temperatures dip that low but everybody is out uh, wandering around scratching the dirt uh, gave them a bunch of greens um, a little while ago and a little bit of bread, not a lot of bread, but mostly greens and some cracked corn. And um, hopefully everybody will be real quiet for us. So what I have here is I ordered some, some seeds and I ordered some trays from Bootstrap Farmer. And so I wanted to bring you along as I open these things up. Um, these seeds are from Baker Creek and I'm so excited because after our cold snap I lost so many things um, like my cabbage a couple of them just couldn't take it I lost a uh, Brussels sprout plant um, I lost some broccoli it was just too cold in the greenhouse for all this so I'm gonna start over and that's okay because that's what we do as gardeners and homesteaders so Let's open up Baker Creek and see what we got. I'm so excited. You guys get excited when you get seeds? Because it's like, it's better than Christmas. In fact, when I get seed catalogs, I hide and I go through them. <laughs> oh my goodness. I forgot everything that I bought. But, let's go through this just real fast. Um, I got some peppers. I got some flowers. Oh, gotta have cosmic candies. I want to grow some yarrow. It's supposed to be really good for you. Um, more spaghetti squash. Kohlrabi. Well, I grew a kohlrabi. I've never grown one before. And I think I picked it up from my feed store. They had a little six pack and only one of them kept growing. I lost the other ones. But these are so good. After I sort of like um, skinned the, the outside part of it off, um, I just, I, I sliced it and then I cut it into like, um, look like little sticks. And they are so good. Raw. Um, we used them to dip in some hummus and it was super delicious. What a great healthy snack. So I'm growing more of these. Of course, I'm getting ready for my um, my uh, spring garden. So I got some tomatoes. I had lost all my spinach, so I got more of those. Um, more tomatoes. These are the Rebecca Allens. I think these are going to be really good for um, canning up because there's a lot of meat, not a lot of water in them. Okay, if you have never grown scallop squash, it is a must. When my daughter was here during the uh, summertime visiting me, I had a few of these that popped up and I only got a few this year. I'm going to grow a whole lot more because we took them in the house and we diced them up and they were, they were pretty big sized chunks and I threw them on a cookie sheet with some onion and I think uh, some other kind of squashes and I uh, baked them up and they were delicious. So if you can grow your scallops, they, they're not real strong flavor, um, but they're very, very good. So I'm excited to grow those again. Uh, some straw flowers. Who doesn't like straw flowers? I remember these when I was little. Um, here's some sweet dumpling squash. I'm excited to grow. Again, I'm gonna roast these um, like I did the, the scallop squash. I'm gonna roast these in the oven some Abe Lincoln tomatoes, um, some, oh, a toothache plant. Go figure, I didn't even know. I, this is just a fun grow for me. Of course, our staple zucchini. Um, candy Roaster North Georgia squash. How interesting is that? Um, I'm excited to grow this. And if it turns out good, I'll save the seeds and grow some more. Of course, I got a free seed of phlox. Baker Creek's good about sending out free seeds. Oh, ground cherries. These, I'm so excited to grow. Um, from what I understand, it's a very long growing um, 
uh, plant so I want to get these uh, into my um, uh, pots as soon as possible so I got to get those growing and some huckleberry how fun is that gonna be to grow cucumbers love cucumbers and I love pickling them up too and canning them more cauliflower we I grew again I got a six-pack uh, from my local uh, feed store and I planted them and only one I got a head out of so I'm gonna grow a whole lot more because everybody loved it when you grow things from your garden, they taste so much better. Um, some Connecticut field pumpkins. Of course, we gotta grow our carrots. I got one broccoli plant to give me a broccoli head out of six that I got at my feed store, so I'm, I'm into broccoli. I need to grow more. Some Kirkneck squash, love this stuff. It's good roasted. Um, and then Salpy Glossies Black Trumpets. I don't know, they were pretty, so I bought them. See how they turn out. Uh, Purslane Greens. Okay, somebody told me something about Purslane, and it grows like a weed in some places, but you can eat the leaves, so I'm excited to grow this. If you know um, how to eat these, or if you grow it wild, leave a comment down below I'd love to hear from you um, calendula you can eat the flowers of calendula so I'm excited to grow some of those and jigsaw peppers okay I grew these and they're hot little guys and grandma loves hot so we're gonna grow more for her um, and gourds while I was at Kay's house she had gourds hanging from her trees and she made them into um, bird nests. So I'm going to grow a bunch of these and help out my birds. And quinoa. I ate quinoa for the first time at my daughter's house and it was delicious. Uh, she cooked up a pan full and we just added it to our salad and not a lot of flavor but it sure is good for you so I'm going to grow some of my own. Free seeds, more carrots. Gotta love the carrots. And here is for those of you who like jalapenos, but you don't like the heat, Keith is not a heat loving kind of guy, but I'll tell you what, I'm gonna surprise him and grow some natapenos. And here's some Martino's aromas. Again, I'm gonna grow those for um, canning purposes. And I have a whole bunch more seeds in the house too, but this is so much fun. I love buying seeds. I know, I, I'm a seed fanatic. And probably most of you are. If you are, let me know. I think all of these cost me a little over $100, but that's okay because I'm going to grow it and we're going to eat it and life is going to be wonderful. So from Bootstrap Farmer, um, I got I got my tape um, to patch up my greenhouse because we got a few holes in it. Um, one was my fault, so I had to get some patching tape. Let's see what else I got. And they package these things up so nicely. Everything is folded. And I don't know how exciting this is going to be for some of you, but for me, totally excited. <laughs> this is awesome. So I, I'm going to grow my things. <laughs> Um, in these trays and I didn't buy um, containers to put in my trays I'm just going to find my trays they got holes in them for good drainage I may have to find probably should have bought the bottom um, to hold the water in I'll have to figure that one out I probably have some around here somewhere but um, what I'm gonna do I wanted to show you what I've got here um, right here my handy dandy little wagon um, I've got, I'm, I'm gonna use my soil blocker. And if you haven't tried one, try it out. It's really cool. It's, you just um, get your soil up in there and I'll show you how to do that. And then you push your soil out. Oh look, I have company, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry for that interruption. I had a customer coming over to buy some eggs. So anyways, back to my uh, soil block. 
So I bought this a few years ago and I used it a few times, not religiously, but I think I'm going to get back to it. So that's why I bought these um, containers from Bootstrap. They are really, really good plastic. Like, like your laundry basket kind of plastic. They're, they're not going to um, crack with, with the, the weather. So um, I'm excited to use these. Anyways, with the soil block here, um, I'm going to mix up all my soil here and I just want to um, let you know what I'm using. This right here, this is just some organic soil and it has uh, peat moss and sphagnum and organic materials and um, I think it's like some perlite or something in there. And this right here, this is my soil that um, I've been uh, growing. So I'm excited to use some of that. It still has some big pieces of grass in there and some leaves, but it's okay. It'll break down. And right here, I've got some worm castings. Just want to give the soil a really good boost or give these little seeds a good boost. And here, this is coconut coir. Um, I have some coconut coir over here in my bucket that I've been watering down and I just pulled this out of there. And this is going to help retain the moisture in my in my um my little uh yeah what are they <laughs> i just don't know what do you call it my container how's that oh lord have mercy anyways i'm going to show you how you use these but first i've got to get all of this mixed up and i'm going to add some water and then i'm going to demonstrate how i use these and then i'm going to load these up okay so let's just get to mix in here soil blocker. And I'm going to take just one of these. I'm going to get these out of the way. And you just, really you just press it in and you got to work that soil in there. So it might take you a little bit to get it all in there real good. And I hope that's real good. That's what it looks like. And I'm just gonna lay it inside. I don't know if these are gonna fit exactly, but we'll try. And you just press it. And there you go. Easy as pie. Nothing hard about it. Don't let it scare you. Um, I think it's easier. I remember uh, when I did it before that it was really easy to, um, when you're ready to transplant them up into bigger pots, it's easy to just grab this one block like this and it stays together. What a great invention. I'm going to have fun with this. If you've used a soil block, leave a comment below. How do you like it? Um, and I'll tell you what, I'll tell you who sold me on these. Old Alabama gardener. I miss his videos. And I miss him. I wish I could have met him. We used to message a lot um, together. And uh, I remember he posted on one of his videos. He said, down at the bottom, you know, he never really talked very much until the end. And uh, he had posted one time across the bottom. It said, Women, if you find a man that can cook, marry him first, ask questions later. So. <laughs> I commented on his video. I said, will you marry me? <laughs> and we just kind of became friends because of that. He was such a nice man. Um, and we just wish the best for Mrs. OAG. Um, I know she's um, probably misses him a lot because he used to grow a lot of things for her. So anyways, so back to this. You could just see that it's super easy to do. Um, get yourself all worked up here. Um, you know who else I've seen use these is uh, Justin Rhodes. Yeah, I've seen uh, Becca do it. So, here we go. All right, I'm gonna finish this up and I'll be right back. Okay, 
So I've got almost all my seeds planted. These seeds are teeny, teeny, tiny, every one of them. I've got my kohlrabi planted. I got my broccoli planted. I've got my cauliflower planted. I planted some cabbage and I'm putting two seeds in every hole just in case one seed doesn't germinate. Um, I think there's like probably, I don't know, a lot of seeds in every packet. Just to show you, um, I've got that many. So I'm gonna succession plant two. And so for those of you who don't know what that means, I'm gonna plant this tray first, and then probably in two weeks, I'm going to plant another tray of the exact same things, because these, these take like seven to 10 days to sprout. Um, I might even wait three weeks, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So the last thing I have is my rutabagas, and I've never eaten rutabaga. Very tasty, mild, and sweet. Bright yellow flesh, top quality, a great fall vegetable. These like 45 to 85 degrees. Um, I'm. We're still getting down into the 20s at night, um, probably, and when I'm ready to put these outside, we, our nighttime temperatures should be back up in the 40s. So that's why I'm getting them ready now, and you should be getting yours ready too, depending on your area. I'm in Northeast Texas, for those of you who don't know. So. Seeds are so tiny, you can barely see them going in the hole. Oh well, I might have gotten three or four in every hole. We'll see what happens. If I have to move some, I'll move them into different containers. So there you go. So, I've got all of these planted. I'm doing rutabaga. I'm doing cabbage. I'm doing cauliflower and broccoli and kohlrabi. And if I look on the back, the back of all these packages, it'll tell me the ideal temperatures and how long it takes to sprout. All these are seven to 10 days, except for this one, it's six to nine days. They like between Let's see, 45, 45, 50, 50. This one here wants 60 degree temperatures, the broccoli. So, um, hopefully I can get them out soon. Everything else wants between 45 and 50 degrees for a low. Maximum temperature, 80 and 85. So we won't even hit those kind of temperatures, um, 80 and 85 degrees till May and June. So I'm getting these started just in the nick of time. And all of these are frost hardy. Okay, so as long as I don't go into a freeze, I'm going to be okay, but we're still hitting our nighttime temperatures are super low. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my soil here, and I'm just going to sort of sprinkle it up over the top, and 